Okay, uh, the ankle foot complex is exactly that, complex. It consists of different bones characterized by a variety of axial and non-axial movements. These movements are crucial to normal function. Our feet have to be flexible enough to conform to uneven supporting surfaces and then in an instant serve as a rigid bar that supports our weight and transmits that weight up the kinetic chain. The bones of the ankle foot complex include the tibia, the fibula, the tarsals, the metatarsals, and the phalanges. The tarsal bones include the talus, the talus articulates inferiorly with the calcaneus, the largest tarsal bone, also known as the heel. The talus articulates anteriorly with the navicula. And the calcaneus articulates anteriorly with the cuboid. The navicula articulates anteriorly with the first second, and third cuneiform, named medially to laterally. The foot is often separated into three functional segments. The hind foot or rear foot includes the calcaneus and the talus. The midfoot includes the remaining tarsal bones and the forefoot includes the metatarsals and the phalanges. The ankle foot complex also consists of three major articulations. The talocrural joint, also known as the ankle mortis, consists of the tibia and the talus. The motions of dorsiflexion and plantar flexion occur at this joint. The articulation between the inferior surface of the talus and the superior surface of the calcaneus is known as the subtalar joint. The motions inversion and eversion occur at this joint. The transverse tarsal joint, also known as the mid-tarsal joint, includes the articulation between the anterior talus and calcaneus and the posterior navicular and cuboid. Functionally, this joint cannot be separated from the subtalar joint and therefore inversion and eversion occur here. Other foot motions include supination and pronation, which combine rear and forefoot motions. Excessive pronation or supination in weight-bearing may occur for a variety of reasons, including bony, ligamentous, and muscular anomalies. Since the foot is forced to weight-bear in different areas and weight is redistributed, excessive pronation and supination may cause changes all the way up the kinetic chain. Medial and lateral support of the rear foot is provided by a set of ligaments collectively known as collateral ligaments. The medial collateral ligament is referred to as the deltoid ligament. It consists of four blended ligaments, the posterior and anterior tibiotalar, the tibial calcaneal, and the tibial navicular. The deltoid ligament is broad, thick, and strong. In fact, it is rarely injured. When severely stressed, it is not unusual for the ligament to avulse the bone before tearing. The ankle complex presents with much less lateral support. Lateral support is provided by three small and dispersed ligaments, the posterior talofibula, the calcaneal fibula, and the anterior talofibular ligament. By knowing its fiber orientation, an injured lateral ligament can be directly associated with the mechanism of injury. For instance, the anterior talofibular ligament is the most injured ligament of the body. 
the mechanism of injury is plantar flexion with excessive inversion. The calcaneal fibula is injured with dorsiflexion and excessive inversion, while the posterior talofibular ligament is injured with neutral dorsiflexion plantar flexion and excessive inversion. As previously stated, the foot must be able to alternate between acting as a flexible and then rigid rod. An arch is an architectural structure that due to its geometry and orientation of its component parts to one another is able to bear a great amount of weight. The anatomy of the foot includes the incorporation of three different arches to better accept the forces of weight bearing. The arches are called the medial, lateral, and transverse. The medial longitudinal arch makes up the medial border of the foot running from the calcaneus posteriorly through the talus, navicular, and three cuneiforms anteriorly to the first three metatarsals. Though it may collapse a little during weight bearing, it normally never touches the ground. The lateral longitudinal arch runs from the calcaneus anteriorly through the cuboid to the fourth and fifth metatarsals. It normally rests on the ground during weight bearing. The transverse metatarsal arch runs through the tarsal metatarsal joints. The converging advantages of the three arches distribute standing and walking weight-bearing forces to the heel and metatarsal heads, thereby providing for the stereotypical major weight-bearing areas of the foot. During our in-class lecture, we will examine muscles and other non-contractile structures that are indispensable to optimum function of the ankle-foot complex.